order to improve their operational capability, the Indian Air Force has declared that it is urgently required to equip its MiG-29 fighter aircraft with modern standoff ground assault weapons along with related avionics and control systems. Initial modifications would involve retrofitting 24 MiG-29 aircraft with new hardware and software in order to equip them with the high-speed low-drag HSLD Mark II standoff weapon, which has a strike range of more than 180 kilometers. The MiG-29 is primarily an air defense fighter. Bombs or missiles that are released at a distance far enough from the target to prevent the attacking aircraft from being retaliated against are known as standoff weaponry. These are often precision-guided and are employed against targets that are on the surface. IAF officers said that a request for proposal was floated by the Ministry of Defense on August 7, inviting industrial partners to undertake the project that would be overseen by the IAF's No. 11 Base Repair Depot. The IAF is considering indigenous production of HSLD MK2 missiles, already deployed on Su-30 and Jaguar fighters. Modifying the MiG-29 for HSLD would involve designing bomb racks and developing avionics and software packages. The IAF plans a second life extension program for the MiG-29 fleet, extending their service span from 40 to 50 years, starting from 2025, according to IAF sources. During the International Defense Aviation Exposition, which was held in conjunction with the ongoing Tarung Shakti 2024 exercise, the Indian Air Force demonstrated the Samar-1 air defense system. Samar-2 surface-to-air missile for assured retaliation is a new air defense system that India is getting ready to test fire. It has a range of over 30 kilometers, and Indian Air Force officers involved in the project announced this on Tuesday. The IAF plans to conduct the first firing trials in December, collaborating with two industry partners IAF has developed the air defense system. Both Samar-1 and 2 use Russian-origin air-to-air missiles. Samar-1 is equipped with the R-73E, and the new variant under development has the R-27 missile. The Samar system can destroy aerial threats, including fighter jets, helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles, the officials said. India is also developing an indigenous long-range surface-to-air missile system, under Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO's Project Kusha. It will have a maximum range of 350 kilometers, and is expected to be deployed in around four to five years. BrahMos India's homegrown supersonic cruise missile is quickly becoming well known throughout the world. The joint company between India and Russia, BrahMos Aerospace, is actively negotiating the purchase of this powerful missile system with at least four more nations after the sale to the Philippines was completed successfully. Vietnam and Indonesia, two countries in Southeast Asia, have shown a strong interest in the BrahMos missile because they see its strategic importance in enhancing their marine capabilities. Additionally, the Middle Eastern powerhouses, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, are also in discussions to procure the missile. With a 300-kilometer range and supersonic speed, the BrahMos provides unmatched accuracy and devastating power. These countries' purchase of it would greatly improve their defense capacities and support regional security. The BrahMos missile is expected to become more widely available as talks move forward, enhancing India's standing as a significant defense exporter. According to the Defense Ministry, a combined drill involving the armed forces of Sri Lanka and India began on Monday in the island nation to promote communication and exchange of best practices. August 12 to 25 will be the 10th edition of the India-Sri Lanka Joint Military Exercise, or Mitra Shakti, which will take place at the Army Training School in Maduru Oya. According to the ministry, it would strengthen the combined military capacity to carry out counterinsurgency operations in a less traditional manner in accordance with the UN mandate. Joint Exercise Mitra Shakti is an annual training event conducted alternatively in India and Sri Lanka. Its last edition was conducted in Pune in November 2023. The Joint Exercise Mitra Shakti aims to enhance joint military capability for counterinsurgency operations in a subconventional scenario under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Mandate. It will focus on operations in the semi-urban environment and include tactical drills, joint command posts, intelligence centers, helipad securing, cordon and search operations and drone use. Mitra Shakti will enable both sides to share best practices and tactics, techniques and procedures for conducting joint operations, the ministry said.
An advanced wheeled armored platform, WAP, particularly intended for chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear CBRN missions has been created by India's Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. This platform signifies a noteworthy progression in India's domestic defense capability. In order to conduct an offensive operation inside Pakistan, India has positioned itself to acquire American Striker eight-wheeled armored fighting vehicles. These vehicles are not amphibious, so they can't travel through bodies of water like canals. The WAP is designed for multi-role capabilities, allowing it to be utilized in various operational contexts. It can function as a CBRN reconnaissance vehicle, a command post, an ambulance, and even a light tank. This versatility is crucial for modern military operations, where adaptability is key. The WAP is a 600-horsepower diesel vehicle with advanced protection systems, designed for high-altitude performance and lightweight, making it suitable for various roles like armored personnel carrier and reconnaissance. Its modular design enhances its maneuverability, the WAP was recently showcased at the Defense Expo in Pune, India, highlighting its advanced features and capabilities. A request for information RFI has been released by the Ministry of Defense for the purchase of an integrated drone detection and interdiction system Mark IIA or IDDIS MK2A. It is anticipated that the system will improve India's anti-drone capabilities. The IDI's MK2A system that is being suggested will have sophisticated features for tracking, detection, and surveillance. Additionally, a microprocessor for calculating exact targeting solutions will be part of the system. Most notably, there will be choices for both soft and hard kill in the system. A jammer capability will be implemented for soft kill, or denial of service, actions, and a laser weapon system for hard kill, or annihilation of enemy drones. This development confirms the rising concern of the Indian government regarding the possible hazards posed by unmanned aerial vehicles, especially in view of previous instances of unauthorized drone activity. Investing in a cutting-edge IDI system is a critical first step in protecting vital infrastructure and national security. Defense firms from both home and abroad are invited to respond to the MOD's request for proposals for the creation and delivery of the IDI's MK2A system. It is anticipated that the chosen solution will greatly improve India's ability to counter drones. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.